All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we're gonna talk about Shakur Stevenson and his upcoming fight that I do not like for him, for him at all, but should be a good fight. Let's talk about how Bob Arum is making this dude look bad in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we are in the 130 pound division talking about the unified champion Shakur Stevenson, the WBC and the IBF champion, and his fight against Robson Conceição of Brazil. And man, I'm telling you right now, this ain't doing Shakur Stevenson a lot of favors with this matchup. Uh, before I get into that, though, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are a longtime subscriber and supporter, you know how much I appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. If you are new to the channel, please make sure you hit that like, that subscribe button and that bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. We have an ongoing conversation that we have on this channel in live stream format and in video format format. Really, really good conversation. So join us on our daily boxing talks. All right. So let's get into this. Shakur Stevenson uh, just uh, unified the championship, uh, unified belts at 130 in a very big fight, uh, a relatively big fight uh, with Oscar Valdez, who was an uh, up and coming you know, star for top rank. One of the breakthrough moments in, of Shakur Stevenson's career. Before that, he fought um, Jamel Herring to win the WBO belt. And I think his best performance of his career when he stopped the veteran, the veteran champion, reigning champion, uh, and made basically made the uh, beat him so bad they had to wave the fight off. Right now to come back with this fight against Robson and Sal, I am like, OK, this is going to be a fight in which in which Shakur Stevenson is not going to look as good as I would like for Shakur Stevenson to look in a fight. Now, if he winds up, if he winds up looking good in the fight and really making an exciting, and I'll explain what I mean by looking good in the fight. I mean it, I mean in the sense that it is going to attract fans to him, right? And make it and grow his profile and have him be somebody that be that is known beyond really hardcore boxing fans is somebody that is exciting to watch and somebody that is, you know, that you should be making really big fights for. Because at the end of the day, that's what makes the really big matchups is when people, boxing fans, are calling for fights to take place. And when you have fights where they're really highly technical fights that go the, di that go the distance, um, you wind up having, you don't really have a big, you know, not a lot of drums behind you beating, you know, beating people, beating drums to get the fights that we want to see. And that's for me, I think the end game is the 135 pound division. If it's not, if the end game is not the 135 pound division, then it should be with top rank him getting the fights to become the undisputed champion at 130, which it does not sound like top rank and Bob Arum are very interested in doing. Now, as far as Conceição himself, he's a good, definitely a good fighter. Don't get me wrong. He's a good fighter. I'm probably going to enjoy the fight because it's, it, I like technical fights. I like seeing what people call the sweet science, right? Or some, I think all of that stuff is in the sweet science, including getting somebody getting knocked out. However, with Robinson Conceição, if he fights the way that I've seen Robinson Conceição, I've seen Conceição fight twice. The last time I saw him fight was with um, Oscar Valdez. And he is a technical fighter fighting behind the fighting behind the jab, you know, good, very, you know, a decent counter puncher, a good, solid fighter. And in fact, I think that he beat Oscar Valdez before Shakur Stevenson beat Oscar Valdez. I thought he was up and all, up all, halfway through the fight. I thought he won almost every round in the first half of the fight. And they probably split rounds in the second half of the, half of the fight because Oscar Valdez started coming on, started coming on more towards the second half of the fight. But again, Shakur Stevenson, especially coming off of the, the fight with Oscar Valdez, it's probably going to be a fight where Shakur Stevenson just outboxes him, where he's from fighting. I'm not sure. I can't recall if Conceição is a southpaw or not. Forgive me for not remembering that. Um, I believe he's orthodox. However, 
Um, I'll see him just pretty much just outboxing him, right? Just jab, you know, just jab. You know, I lo love the way he goes up to, you know, from top to bottom, right? Jab, you know, to you know, to shots uh, straight, rights to the stomach. Um, good crisp counter punches, right? And maybe he'll fight in a style where he's standing in front of you, walking you down a little bit, may get on the back foot a little bit. I think against Kaseysa, more than likely, he probably will try to walk him, you know, probably will try to walk him down. But the the highest probability for that fight is a is a you know, is a 12 round is a 12 round decision where the naysayers are going to come out talking about how he's not very exciting. Right. And now if he's not going to again and I would prefer him to have fought like the Navratti fight, that is a fight where I think if Shakur Stevens could have got that fight, it would have been one where he really could shine because this guy was is going to be is going to uh, Navratti is going to put himself in situations where Shakur Stevenson can really capitalize and wind up starting to break that dude down and get him out of there and get him out of there in a way where you can see in a very, very, you know, obvious fashion for people that are casual fans, exactly how good a fighter he is. Now, the reason that I think that that is important, because usually I'll say, OK, it is what it is. If you win the fight, it's a good fight. It's a good fight. Right. Uh, I say that because I believe that Shakur Stevenson's game is to get the big fights at 135 pounds and to make fights, you know, the exciting fights at 135. The fight that I want to see for him at 135 is the Gervonta Davis fight. And in order for that to happen, Shakur Stevenson's profile has to grow to the grow to the stand to the point where they're going to want to make that fight because of the money that that fight is going to bring in. Otherwise, what you're going to have is you're going to have that top rank, that top rank PBC wall just be up and stuck there for a long period of time while Gervonta Davis is getting the knockout, selling out arenas and doing all of that. And Shakur Stevenson is having technical decisions Technical fights and 12 round decisions against guys like Robertson, Robertson can say Sal, Oscar Valdez, right? And guys like Nakathelia, because, you know, that's another one of the fights like Nakathelia. People listen to how people talked about Shakur after that fight with Nakathelia about how, you know, oh, man, he went the distance with Nakathelia and he was, you know, uh, had problems with Nakathelia. He wouldn't step on the gas. Well, little did people know Nakathelia is a knockout puncher. Right. Who had knocked out everybody in his career and moved up to 135, moved up to 135 and knocked out and knocked out Ray Belch, uh, uh, not Ray Beltran, excuse me, um, um, Miguel Burchell. Right. So he's a very, very tough fighter. But at the end of the day, the people are going to look are looking to get Shakur's highlight reels together. Say, OK, man, wow, look what this dude. It's similar to what happened with uh with Floyd Mayweather Jr. and Floyd Mayweather Jr.'s career. Once he had that Arturo Gotti fight. Now, he had had other exciting fights before that. Right. Like the fight with uh, Diego Corrales with top rank. But the thing that really kicked him, you know, really kicked it off for him was the fight with uh, with uh, Arturo Gatti. And now a lot of a lot of people thought that Arturo Gatti had a chance to beat him. And in fact, I do believe he's an underdog to Arturo Gatti for some unreal. Oh, no, actually. No, he's an underdog. He was an underdog to um, Diego Corrales. I believe he's an underdog to Diego Corrales. But a lot of people thought that Arturo Gatti could beat him. But the way that he beat him, I think, is what really kicked off that star status for Floyd and then necessitated the guys like Ricky Hatton and um, Ricky Hatton and Oscar De La Hoya fight him. Right. And then you get the big fights and then boom, there he is able to make the fights that Floyd able to make the fights that Floyd wants to make. And that's the situation I like to see Shakur in. I just don't think this particular fight is going to do that for him. But at the same time, I'll take it. You know, not every fight can be, you know, can be, an incredible fight on paper. Now, wind up, it may wind up being a great fight for him, and he may just run through and say, Sal, I hope he does, similar to the way that I wish that, De that Devin Haney was able to run through Cambosis, and I hope he does in the next one, to get that electricity in the division behind their names to necessitate the big fights that we want to see. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. You let me know what you think. And with that, I'm out. Peace. Peace.